What is up guys, welcome back to today's Destiny 2 build session, with today's showcase focusing on another powerful bow build, just like last time, and the time before that, but this time being void, and focusing less on CC or support, but more on big DPS on a singular target over time. As many of you may have noticed, I've been running some fun elemental bow and elemental world mods combo for all types of content and showing you how exactly you can maximize each of the bow's speciality for different scenarios and create a build that will allow you to play a pivotal role in the perks and mods you have available. We have done one solar build that focused on support, one arc build that focused on crowd control, and now we will create the final build that will focus on DPS via Void and that once again will follow the same rules and loadouts as the other two. The build will involve the use of the Lil Monarch Exotic Void bow for continuous damage over time and then combine them with Top Tree Void and Controverse Hold for a big boost in grenade damage as well in its duration and then lastly we will enhance our abilities via the Elemental World mods which will work alongside everything Void based that we have to offer. This will overall create a high DPS and continuous damage build that will help you against the biggest and baddest enemies available in normal or endgame content and you will be rewarded with more energy as long as you keep the damage up. A lot of what I'm about to say to you may sound familiar to what my other builds are like and you may even see a few things such as mods or perks being used or repeated again. And this is basically to show you how similar the build is compared to the other bow builds we have done in the past. Think of the build like a purple member of the Power Rangers who focuses less on team support and more on inflicting the maximum amount of damage to a boss. It sounds crazy and slightly out there but it works. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then I'll really appreciate a like and a sub, as it goes a long way for me. So the subclass I've chosen is the Eternal of Chaos, which will be combined with the Controverse Hold Exotic and Chaos Accelerant Tree Perk for a bigger, stronger and longer lasting grenades. If you are ever deciding to head into Endgame and you want a simple build that will net you a lot of grenade energy back while producing a large amount of damage in one go, then this combo is the one you want to go for as it is extremely useful against a single powerful enemy with his damage over time. This subclass is a very good introductory class that can be used in all content, as its passive ability will reward you strongly for its grenade regen and then super. Entropic Pool will grant you grenade energy when you melee and activate it, and Chaos Accelerant will allow you to overcharge your grenade to make it a lot more stronger and also last longer. And these two are mainly the two perks that our build will strongly rely on throughout the whole build. Compared to middle tree and bottom tree, they don't require a lot to activate them, which is great for using it end game. But mainly the fact that you can combine it with the controverse hold exotic and also get a random amount of energy back, pretty much sets the build up for a singular powerful enemy clearer that you can always rely on. Because of this, you can easily take a good chunk of enemy health away in one grenade throw and then use your bow to tack on more damage over time and hopefully once the grenades are finished you should have enough energy left over that you can throw another one after use or will need to top off again with the elemental one mods. Although bottom tree can work as well, the hunger tree line requires you to be more aggressive in taking on enemies to keep the build afloat. Something that I believe won't work with what I'm going for as it's too risky to use if you get surrounded and you die too much. And I would need to also change the weaponry up to accommodate the sub tree, which would ruin what we already got going. This, of course, may be something that you could work with if you test it around on your end. For weapons, the loadout is near the same as my last recent build, with a few changes to primary and heavy being used. I thought it would be wise to show you what other weaponry is viable if you don't want to carry on using the meta tier weapons. It's also nice to change up how we play and content as well as there are some weapons that don't get the love they deserve because they get easily overlooked. My primary will be the Toil and Trouble Shotgun with Slide Shot and Snapshot Sight and although the role I have isn't what I would call a PvE role, it's still just as much effective in PvE as it would be in PvP. As an aggressive frame, the weapon has a high punch to it but also reloads pretty slowly which thankfully in our case we can fix this area via the Slide Shot perk which will partly reload the weapon. Compared to Heritage, it has more brute force available which is handy for stunning mages and taking shields down in one shot, plus it also requires less ammo in general to take up tougher enemies to a degree. But it lacks the critical damage that Heritage holds, 
And if you are accurate and can land all your critical shots in one full magazine, then you're getting a lot more damage compared to what Toy on Trouble can put out. Downside to Heritage though is that, funny enough, it lacks brute damage that Toy all has, which would be useful for stripping elemental shields down. You can see that both shotguns are viable and are a good choice to pick if you have either one. They both give you good damage, just one will be a lot more suitable in certain environments. For secondary, I'm using the Le Monarch Void Bow that will allow us to add Void Bird damage to any enemies affected and will act in hand with our exotic gauntlets and subclass grenades. The bow is very similar to how Tiku's Divination works with the burn tick damage over time, but it's more slightly straightforward in terms of applying it and on a repeated basis compared to Tiku's design. With the subclass, it will work alongside our overcharged grenades for more damage as long as we proc its ability on a continuous basis, and will also aid in generating ability energy via the Elemental Armaments mod that will increase the likelihood chance that our Elemental Well will always drop. It can also spread its effects to others who are caught within its blast radius, allowing us to easily mop up any stragglers near key enemies, which is handy when you can't get close to certain types of enemies. The only downside to the bow is that it lacks a catalyst compared to Tiku's and Trinity, which it sorely needs to further buff the weapon. For heavy, I've chosen to use the 7th Serra's Saw Machine Gun with Clown Cartridge and Brawl for Weapon, and although the machine guns are in a weird place in terms of use and DPS, they still have some straight up damage potential against bosses when used for continuous damage over time. The role I have is specifically designed around builds as much as can be, with Clown Cartridge allowing you to gain a random amount of extended ammo to your current magazine after each reload, which can be useful when 56 in the magazine won't be enough for whatever you're up against. And then, Vorpal is very handy against bosses as you're getting a straight 15% damage increasement. Both of these in hand can allow you to do some serious damage on a boss over a long period, which can then further add in the abilities and weapons in play to extend the damage more. Rockets are still viable and so are swords, but in this case here I decided to mix it up and go with machine guns, as they do have some usage here and there. For the stats, we're going to be heavily investing in grenades for pretty much 99% of the content we face and use our abilities where fit. We will need to invest as much as we can for a consistency route of power alongside our other gear. We won't be relying on any demolitionists or worsman perks as they generally won't be needed for what we got. Now, taking a look at discipline, it should roughly be the highest stat in your arsenal as you're going to be using it a lot for activating the elemental well mods and their effects that will help in building up our super, giving us a damage boost and help with regenerating all of our abilities in one go. Aiming for a 70 for a 41 second cooldown or even 60 for a 45 second cooldown would be ideal as we will have enough points left over to invest in other areas that can also benefit from our grenades. And then you also have to remember that we aren't using any given perks such as Wellspring or Demolitionist to help boost their stat anymore, so everything in hand will be naturally gained over time. On top of the stat, we are also going to be adding in the Elemental Orders mod which will allow you to drop a Void Well upon grenade kills and then this will allow you the ability to have improved ability regeneration for 30 seconds. And then the Elemental Armors mod will also allow us to produce Elemental Wells as well as we go via our Void Bow via kills. Common mods such as Distribution, Installation and Bomber will also be present for faster overall ability and grenade regeneration and at this point, you will have enough passive buffs occurring that will net you more natural energy compared to using a singular perk, which is great for freeing up room for weapon choices and also utilizing your strengths elsewhere. We do also have the intellect stat that is the second most important stat to worry about, as just like our grenades, we will also be using it a lot for DPS. I have aimed for a 50 as we will be combining it with the Font of Wisdom mod which will provide you an extra plus 50 intellect points into your common intellect stat. So with my 50 intellect and the extra 50 intellect from the mod, once active, I will have a cooldown of 100 which is a 3 minute 4 gate cooldown. The good thing with this is that the super is quite effective in endgame content, so it's definitely worth investing a bit of points into this area for the long run. We also have the elemental light mod as well that can net us even more void wells upon our super hitting multiple targets, 
and I found that against a large group of enemies, it can spawn multiple in a short amount of time. It won't look as fast on your end or instant, but the bonus point you're getting for 30 seconds is worth investing in for a passive perk. Though having the energy converter mod may be more fruitful if you know how to maximize that instead. Recovery can get some focus as well if you plan on using your empowering rifts or healing rifts, so aim for 50 is what I would consider a sweet spot. Strength can also follow suit as it will stick in the same pathway as our grenades, but used less often as I don't plan on sticking in close range engagements. 40 would be the most suitable for this stat unless you plan to switch up what I have and use close quarter fighting as part of your own setup. Now, here are the rest of the mods that dictate how the build works behind the scenes. For heads we have intellect, bow ammo finder and elemental armors mod. Arm we have resilience, fastball, overload bow and front of might mod. Chest we have discipline, because of damage times 2 and front of wisdom mod. Leg we have discipline, better already, installation and elemental ordnance mod. Bond we have minor intellect, distribution, bomber and elemental light mod. As you can see, the majority of the mods being used are the same as the last two builds, but with different subclasses, exotics and weaponry in play. This is quite fascinating when you think about it, as they all share a common theme or different elements and heavily rely on elemental wealth to supplement them and keep them going. Builds like these are quite rare to come across for a warlock to where certain things can be copied and pasted, but act completely different than its last counterparts. When you think about using a build, you tend to pick a few, play around with them, and then find something else which is understandable for extended enjoyment in the game. This build and the solar and the arc variant allows you to play with three different builds with three different effects, but still retain the same loadout that you had before, like a 3-in-1 multi-build. The following build focuses a lot on DPS and damage over time, and will be very useful in solo or team play content against big bosses. Your abilities will be passively ongoing throughout whatever mission you're in, thanks to the Elemental World mods, and their effects on their weapons and abilities. These all have a chain effect that will lead back into each other, and thus allow you to repeat your process over and over again without fail, which is what you want overall. Using our bow will provide damage over time and can drop wells upon kills, that will feed back into our abilities, and then we can use our energy to overcharge our grenades and go from there. Using our super can drop wells and goes back into our abilities. Using our grenades can drop wells and go back into our abilities, etc. As long as there's an enemy combatant around the boss, you can pretty much have your abilities freely up and ready whenever you like, as long as you keep the pressure going. The build, to me personally, it acts like a mini Nizarek Sin with a slightly slower ability regeneration, but a much more consistent way of keeping your abilities fresh. And of course, you want to keep this as fresh as possible, especially for Gambit, Strikes, Raids, Dungeons, or even Nightfalls, Solo, or Teams. If you have ever wanted a Void DPS build that makes full use of mods throughout without little sacrifice, try this build when you get the chance to and do try it out in a boss focused content as the damage is very, very large, especially for solo players who need something for the new Lost Sectors or if they want to do a solo run of the new dungeons. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titan for 2 lore content. If you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on the next one.